Hello, let's say you would like to create a dress with a waistband that is connected to the body of any object and I will demonstrate this using this square to demonstrate that it can be done on any irregular shape. Let's go ahead and shrink it down a little bit. Let's hide it for now. Let's add a circle. Let's get in a little bit closer. Let's go edge on. Then let's extra, uh, extrude with E. Let's go to edit mode first and then extrude. That's the waistband. Let's go to X-ray mode here. And box select the bottom vertices and um, extrude again this will be the the dress now let's give it the dress just a little bit of a flare we'll go ahead and scale the bottom vertices are already selected as, in a circle so we'll give it a scale for uh, hitting s and just a little bit is all we need now let's go back up here. Let's go to faces in edit mode. Can zoom in just a little bit more. And then box select all these faces here. Now you got them all selected. Now go to vertex and go to vertex groups and assign new group. Now this has its own group, vertex group, which we will use later. A couple of times actually. So let's move out again. Let's go back to object mode. Let's subdivide this in by using a subdivision modifier. Simple. Let's apply. Let's go to edit mode and you'll see that it's still needs more vertices, I think, to make it uh, flow like a dress. And we won't do too many, just enough to make it move. Just to add them anywhere. That's probably enough. Let's go back to object mode. Let's see the cube. Let's get it out of the x-ray. And it fits in there. Uh, barely right here. Let's shrink it down just a little bit more. That's good enough. Let's subdivide. In order for, for the physics to work right, you'll see it's better to add a lot of vertices to the uh, uh, to the object as well, so that it can calculate how the collisions will work with the fabric against the object. Well, anyway, let's add some subdivision. Simple and apply and the fabric will need to collide with this object so we'll go to the physics and apply a collision now the fabric we'll call it a cloth and we will go to shape the vertex group that we used that we created earlier and we use that as the pin group so that this will stay static pinned in space here now we want to have this vertex group band 
snug against this cube or any other shape that you other mesh that you can think of we well, can do that by going to the modifier properties and add another modifier you can see that the cloth that we created here is showing here but you have to apply the cloth first and then apply a shrink wrap here the target is the cube and you see that it does that but we only want to use that vertex group that we created now you can see it's nice and snug there that band that vertex group is now occupying the same space actually as the cube that's why you get these face artifacts here to solve that you use this offset here just put a very tiny amount like 0 0.01 and you will see that it, those artifacts go away Now, if I were to rotate the cube, you'll see that the shrink wrap continues to, uh, to show, but it doesn't attach itself. The band doesn't attach itself the way you want would want to to the cube itself. So obviously, just parent address to the cube in the hierarchy the, the address must be a child within the cube now if I rotate the entire thing moves now you'll see that in the simulation Let's give it some motion. Click the cube and uh, insert a keyframe. Let's say rotation. Let's do a quick one right here. Whatever. And then make this minus 180. You can see that it's already simulating. Let's go here. Let's go back to the, let's, uh, there. let's go to here, See what happens. There we go. Let's add even more rotation. You see that the band will follow the original placement of the cube of the body. You would have to play with the properties of the the, the cloth to adjust the, the way it flows, the way it hangs. It has a flare because we put it there originally in edit mode. Uh, let's 
just take a nicer look. Uh, 